Hi, in this video we're going to look at the basic principles of distortion in audio. Although distortion can be defined as any alteration in the waveform of an audio signal, usually in audio we're referring to harmonic distortion. Harmonic distortion in amplifiers is usually caused by the amplifier needing more voltage than its power supply can provide. It can also be caused by some part of the internal circuit exceeding its output capacity. To demonstrate this, I'm going to start off with a sine wave and operator. I'm using a sine wave because it's the purest tone. It has no harmonics. It just has a fundamental. Now using Ableton's saturator, we're going to look at what happens to the sine wave when we introduce clipping. Using the analog mode, we can see the waveform begins to bend at the point where it clips and also introduces new harmonics, which we can see in Vox and Go Span. Next we'll try the digital clip algorithm and see how it compares to the analog one. This will square off the waveform more aggressively and introduce even more harmonics. Two reasons why we would use distortion is to introduce new harmonics or as a form of compression to control the peaks in a signal. The new harmonics that are introduced and how the waveform is clipped is very dependent on the circuit, algorithm or plugin being used. To demonstrate this we're going to look at some of the algorithms in Isotope Trash 2 and how they affect the shape of the waveform and the harmonics that are introduced. Once again, I'm going to use the sine wave in Ableton's operator. With this hard clip algorithm, our sine wave has become something much more complex. As you can see, different algorithms have a completely different effect on the sine wave, introducing completely different harmonics and a completely different shaped waveform. Also, using the wave shaper algorithm in Saturator, we have a lot more further controls. By controlling these parameters in the wave shaper in Ableton, we can completely change the waveform by changing the transfer curve or sine wave that's being imposed upon our signal. We can change the shape of it and the tonality and waveform that's generated. The drive and depth control the intensity of the distortion, whereas the curve controls the new harmonics that are being introduced. 
Next, we're going to go back to Isotrope Trash 2 and look at multiband distortion, which gives us a lot more control as we can distort specific frequencies within an audio signal. The signal's divided up using filters in parallel prior to the distortion. This time I'm going to use a sawtooth because it's more harmonically rich. This gives us a lot of control for where we want to add the harmonics. Because the filtering takes place prior to the distortion, harmonics are still produced above the where the frequency band is divided. So if I select between 3 and 800 hertz, there's still going to be harmonics above the 800 hertz range, but we're controlling what region is producing those harmonics. Next we're going to look at how filters can affect distortion. I'm going to use Native Instruments FM8 with quite a complex patch that has lots of harmonics. Uh, we're going to look at by filtering before and after the signal how much of a difference it makes. Next we'll look at using EQ and filters with the Wave Shaper. Using the Wave Shaper post filters and doing a EQ boost before the Wave Shaper, we can control how it responds. By doing a boost, we can make a frequency range distort more. And using the post filters, we can control the new harmonics that have been produced. Next, we'll look at using distortion on synths and how we can add brightness and character and bring sounds to life. So I've got some loops that I've made for a ghost hack pack and we'll listen to them dry first and then see how much of a difference we can make using Isotope Trash 2.
as you can hear using multiband distortion you can bring out character out of the sound you can pick out specific frequency ranges and bring them to the forefront as you could hear in this case it was bringing out and exacerbating some of the resonance in the strings but we can use this to pick out frequency bands that we like and exaggerate them and bring them to the forefront which makes it a really powerful and flexible tool for sculpting sounds next we're going to look at using multiband distortion on drums using distortion on drums can really glue them together and it gives them a, a character because they're all being distorted and going through that same process together it can unify them and make them sound as one so for this example I'm going to use some samples of the liquid drum and bass essentials pack of ghost hack uh, we're going to play with some distortion and see how it changes the character of the sound and brings them to life so I've taken a drum and percussion loop and grouped them together and let's have a to them try and then by adding distortion and what character it changes in the drums The distortion's really being dictated to by the kick drum, so by putting it in multiband mode we can get around this.
So I'd play around with different distortion plugins, different algorithms, different wave shapes, and using EQ and filters both prior and post the distortion to control how it responds. And you can also heavily distort a signal and mix it back in with a dry signal to get a thickness and character 